things in that. So don't worry about it. No worries. Have you ever heard of these words? They're easy words to say, but hard to put into practice. In essence, this is what today's scripture tells us. Let's be honest, we all worry, don't we? The ignorant worry because they don't know enough. The knowledgeable worry because they know too much. The poor worry because they don't have enough. The rich worry because they are afraid of losing what they have. And on and on and on it goes. Blessed is the man who is too busy to worry in the daytime and too sleepy to worry at night. A problem not worth praying about is not worth worrying about. Today, today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. Edna couldn't sleep at night because she worried that her home might be robbed. So one night her husband, he did hear a, a noise at night in the house. And so he went downstairs to investigate. And when he got there, he found a burglar. And the husband said to the burglar, come upstairs and meet my wife. She has been waiting for you for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Worry can steal your night after night for many years. A security system can stop burglars, but how do you stop worry? How do you prevent anxiety from stealing your peace? Chuck Swindoll said that worry is anything that drains your tank of joy. Something you cannot change, something you are not responsible for, something that you're unable to control, something or someone that frightens and torments you, that agitates you, that keeps you awake when you should be asleep. At times, it might be nice to have a professional worrier. You know, someone who frets and stews over our problems while we have a carefree life. But Jesus says that we have something better than a professional worrier. We have God. Ralph was head over heels in trouble and, and doing little to help himself. And a friend advised him and said, Ralph, you've got two hands. You've got two hands. Why don't you do something? I am, said Ralph. I'm ringing both of them. <laughs> Jessica lived alone, and she sat in her house for weeks at a time with the, with the shades pulled down and the doors locked, and, and she had no interaction with anyone. And she was extremely lonely. And so finally she decided to do something about her situation, so she visited a local pet store. So she looked at the dogs and the cats and the goldfish and the hamsters and the snakes, but nothing seemed quite right. So she told the pet owner that she wanted a pet that could be a real companion, and he showed her one of his prized parrots. Does it talk? Just pets? Absolutely, the pet owner said. And, and the parrot has a friendly disposition and a wide vocabulary. Well, I'll take in, said Jessica. So she took the parrot home. And a week passed, and the bird said nothing. Jessica went back to the pet store and she bought a mirror to put in the cage. And another week passed and still the parrot said nothing. <coughs> now Jessica was worried about the parrot. So she returned to the store and she, she bought the parrot a little swing to put in his cage. Still absolute silence. Another week passed and suddenly Jessica rushed back to the pet store and said, my parrot died. He is dead in the bottom of the cage. I'm shocked, said the pet owner. Did, did, did the parrot not say anything at all? Yeah, yes, Jessica said. As a matter of fact, he did. As he, as he lay there gasping, in the last few breaths, he said very faintly, Don't they have any food down there at the pet store? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we focus on the wrong things when really there's only one thing that matters. When we worry, we turn our attention to the wrong things, and it leads us to live our lives for the wrong reasons. But God has better things in store for us. Worry is the interest we pay on tomorrow's troubles. Northwestern University did a study, and they, and they found, they were able to prove conclusively that worry restricts the flow of saliva which leads to tooth decay. And for you college students out there, a survey of college students indicated that the warriors got the lowest grades academically. Worry can break us down. Combined with stress, it is the unseen source
source of head aches and back aches and belly aches. It produces everything from obesity to obscenity, from constipation to diarrhea. It gives us knotted stomachs, sleepless nights, high blood pressure, and low morale. It makes our temper short and our days long. It causes indigestion, irritation, chest pain, and muscle strain. Worry affects our total being. Someone once said that ulcers are caused not by what you eat, but by what is eating you. Another said that worry is like a rocking chair. It will give you something to do, but it won't get you anywhere. Constant worry is an insult to God. It is asserting that we can't trust God to provide for our future. We have already been taught, give us this day our daily bread. That's daily bread, not weekly, not monthly. Bread sufficient for the day. Have you ever heard that worry is a form of atheism? For it betrays a lack of faith and trust in God. What kind of things do you worry about? Are they mostly the big things like world events or crime or finances, relationships, your children, your spouse, your job, your health? The most recent survey said that adults worry about getting old. Their savings, <coughs> credit card debt, job security, paying rent or the mortgage, whether they are a good parent and raising their children right, meeting their work goals, their pets' health, and crime levels. They even did a survey on children. And the number of children that they, that they interviewed and surveyed, the average number of worries for children is almost eight. That each child has eight worries. And children are most worried about their family, their classmates, their friends, school safety, <coughs> war, money, the environment, and disasters. When children and youth were asked what they would like to change most in their lives, the most frequent answer was to have their parents who are less stressed, less worried, and less tired. We can worry till we're blue in the face about interest rates or about depreciation in our homes or whether or not our belongings will be destroyed by moth or rust or whether a thief will break in and steal our belongings. But in the long run, there is not much we can do about any of those things. Have you ever heard the phrase, like a dog worrying a bone? It's an old English phrase that contains the picture behind the word worry. A dog will shake and chew and gnaw and bite on a bone for hours, trying to wear it down. It's a compulsion. The dog will work and work on that bone until something of great importance interrupts him. And even when the dog becomes exhausted of worrying the bone, he will go and bury it. So they'll know just where to find it later on. Left unchecked, a, a dog will work that bone until it is totally dissolved. Not when it comes to us. We need to realize that we are the bone. The worry we allow ourselves, and the worry we allow ourselves to literally have the life shaken out of us. We all want to be happy. We probably don't know a single person who intentionally chooses to be unhappy. Happiness is something we choose, and of course that happiness is the importance of, of winning over our worries. We all worry from time to time. Some of our worries are rational, some are irrational. But worrying never helps us to be happy. We can all agree that when it comes to membership in the human race, worry is part of the package. James Cash Penny, who started the J.C. Penny stores, made some unwise commitments and became very depressed. He worried so much that he developed shingles. He went to see his doctor who admitted him to the hospital, but his condition grew worse. And one night he was prescribed a sedative that quickly wore off, and he awoke believing that he might die that night. So he wrote letters to his family and fell asleep. When he awoke the next morning, he heard people singing, God will take care of you, in the chapel 
and he went in. He listened to the singing and to the message with a heavy heart, but then he said something happened. He said, I realized that I was responsible for all of my troubles and my worries, and I know that God loves me, and God was there to help me. He said from that day forward, his life became worry-free, knowing that God would take care of him. Worry blocks our view of God. Have you ever worried that you're not worried enough? Jesus is very clear on this issue. In Matthew 6, Jesus used the expression, do not worry, three times. We have better things to do, my friends. But know that do not worry does not mean do not plan. Jesus said, do not worry for tomorrow. But know that Jesus had no trouble with planning. He planned for his ministry after his death, resurrection, and ascension. He spent plenty of time preparing his disciples for Jerusalem and beyond. If we plan ahead of time and prepare for the future, we will worry less. So do not worry does not mean do not plan. <coughs> Jesus has a simple prescription. We must set our priority in order. We must seek the things of God first. We must focus on living a righteous life, and then everything else will be taken care of. One day, John Wesley was walking with a troubled man who expressed his doubts as to the goodness of God. And he said, I do not know what I shall do with all my worries and all my troubles. And at that moment, John Wesley saw a cow looking over a stone wall. Do you know, asked Wesley, why that cow is looking over that wall? No, said the other man. Wesley said that cow is looking over that wall because she can't see through it. And that's what you must do with your wall of worry and trouble. Look over it and avoid it. Faith enables us to look past our circumstances and focus on Christ. There are some things that we need to be concerned about. There's a difference between carefree and careless. Concern focuses on the present. Worry focuses on the future. The present is here and now, and there's an action that we can take. <coughs> Jesus taught us what worry is all about and how we can face it. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? This is an argument from the greater to the lesser. Jesus listed things that we need not worry about. Since God created us, God will sustain us. If we believe in the creator God, then we must also believe in the sustainer God. Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you, are you, are you not much more valuable than they? And this is an argument from the lesser to the greater. <coughs> we must realize the futility of worrying. Worrying is contrary to our faith. Worry doesn't accomplish anything, and it hinders our spiritual walk. It doesn't benefit us. It steals our happiness. There was a clinical psychologist who said, worry sucks the joy out of the here and now. Give it up! A man working on a barge in the Mississippi was carrying something and he fell overboard. And he cried for help and he went down underneath the water. And he came back up and again he cried for help and he said, If somebody doesn't help me, I'm going to have to drop one of these bricks. That's us. With a load of care under one arm, carrying more than what God wants us to carry. Learn to live in the present. Worrying about the past is like trying to put the toothpaste back into the tomb. And worrying about tomorrow's agenda can put us over the weight limit. Have you ever tried to carry too many bags of groceries at the same time? And after cleaning the broken eggs from the driveway or wiping up the spilled milk, you know better. Better to make two trips instead of one. Jesus is trying to tell us today to just carry the bags for today. Make a new trip tomorrow. Living in the present tense is an art. People who live in the present tense are full of energy and charisma. You don't catch them worrying. And this is how Jesus wants us to live, one day at a time. We have no control over the future. Today's problems are all that we are capable of handling without being distracted. Let tomorrow take care of itself by trusting
trusting in God and by doing God's will today. That's Jesus' advice to us this morning. Don't think too far ahead. Attack things one day at a time and let tomorrow's worries take care of themselves. Don't be anxious. Instead, look at the birds and look at the flowers. And then look to God. And give it up! <laughs>